hello and welcome to engineers mindset so in this video we are going to be looking at planar density of bcc 101 plane okay so let's start by setting our formula planar density pd is defined simply as the number of atoms on a given plane divide by divide by the area of the plane divide by the area of the plane okay now we're talking about the body centered cubic structure 101 let's start first by plotting our simple cubic structure so we'll pull down our simple cubic structure okay so call here your y intercept call here your x intercept call here your z intercept mind you these directions can be taken anyhow you can call here x you can call here y and you can call here z okay now we want to plot the plane 101 keeping in mind that each of these distances apart are one meters apart distance apart are simply one now the plane 101 first of all let's find the intercept of this given miller indices so the miller indices are um h k l which is given in the question there as plane 101 so this means that h is equal to 1 k is equal to 0 and l is equal to 1 now you find your intercepts you find your intercept for the x intercept it is taken simply as 1 all over h so this is going to be equal to 1 all over h there is equal to 1 so that becomes 1 all over 1 so this means that that plane cuts x in x as is at 1 because 1 divided by 1 gives you 1 the y intercept is taken as 1 all over k so this is going to be 1 all over the k value there is 0 so it becomes 1 all over 0 and 1 over 0 gives us infinity so this simply implies that the plane cuts the y intercept as where well, infinity which means it doesn't touch the y intercept finally for the z intercept z is taken as 1 all over l and this is equal to 1 all over l there is equal to 1 so that becomes 1 all over 1 this simply implies that the plane cuts z also at one so our plane uh, or our intercept x y and z is simply given as one infinity and one so you come to your plane from the origin it cuts s at one this is x and this is one this is where it cuts it it cuts y at infinity so we hold on with infinity let's move to z it cuts z at one so from the origin this is z and this is one you now asterisk now since it is infinity to y it means that x is parallel to y and z is also parallel to y it cuts x at one cuts z at one but then y is infinity this simply means that the x plane is parallel to y as much as the z plane is parallel to y so what you do is it cuts x at one this is one on point x so it means at this point this point x is parallel to y so you draw parallel lines from x just to um, parallel to y so from x you have something like this so this is parallel to y this is the y axis the same thing happens here it cuts z at one and z is also parallel to y so from the z draw parallel lines straight lines to y because this is the vertical line or this present the y line so it cuts x at one so x is parallel to the y plane z plane is also parallel to the y plane now join x and z together you have from here to this point joining these two points together the same thing happens when you draw your parallel lines to this point draw your parallel lines to this point this becomes your point z and this becomes your point x so you also join these two points together and you have this so this is now the bodies this is now the bcc plane one zero 
one okay so you have something like this all right so this is our plane one zero one structure all right it looks like this now not forgetting we have corner atoms we have corner atoms at each plane we have corner atoms this is a simple group structure so we always have corner atoms you have corner atoms here okay now it is said to be a body center cubic structure because at the body of the cube we have a central atom okay so do where to look at the description of this video i'm going to be posting the link of the atomic packing factor for bcc structure where i took time to explain the body center cubic structure okay so it is called a bcc structure because at the body of this cube we have a central atom okay we have a central atom at the body of the cube okay now let's pull out our 101 plane as drawn here this plane is rectangular in shape so you have this this is your 101 plane the plane is rectangular in shape not forgetting we have corner atoms here we have corner atoms here we have corner atoms here we have corner atoms then at the body we have a very big atom centered there which makes it a body centered cubic structure Let me draw this a bit okay all right now this is rectangular in shape from the formula we said number of atoms divided by area of the plane so we need to find the area of the plane how do you find area of the plane since this is rectangular in shape area simply means the length multiplied by the width now what then is the width we've always said that the separation between two corner atoms are called lattice constant so this corner atom and this corner atom their separation or distance between the two of them is called the lattice constant a similarly from this corner atom to this corner atom the pressure between the two of them is called the lattice constant a same thing with this corner atom to this corner atom separation between the two is called lattice constant a but you observe that from this point this distance from this atom to this atom is actually making a right angle triangle with this point which means in order to obtain this longest arm of this rectangle we have to consider this right angle triangle this and this so let's call here point a call here point b call here point c okay so let's pull out this right angle triangle and find the longest arm which represents the length of the rectangle so we can do that over here so considering that right angle triangle you have something like this so this is a this is b and this is c not forgetting we have corner atoms at each point now distance from a to c we call that the lattice constant which is a similarly distance from c to b is also the lattice constant a so we are now looking for the longest arm a to b which is the longest arm of this rectangle we're looking for a to b which appears to be the hypotenuse arm of this rectangle triangle a b and c so all we are looking for now is a to b we simply employ our pythagoras theorem from pythagoras theorem a b all squared is equal to a c squared but a c is equal to a so that becomes a squared plus again c b squared but c b is equal to a so you simply have plus a squared so a b all squared is equal to a squared plus a squared that gives us 2 a squared now we make a the subject of the formula therefore a b is going to be equal to the square root of 2 a squared now with this you can find the square root of a squared so you pull it out this simply implies that a b is equal to the square root of a squared is simply a so 2 remains in the square root so the length of that rectangle is simply a root 2 okay so that means the length of this rectangle is a root 2 we are as spacing between two atoms remains the lattice constant a okay so you have this 
Now we need to find the area of the rectangle, area of the plane, of course the plane is rectangular in shape. So area of the rectangle becomes, okay, area of plane A is length times width. And the length is the longest arm of the rectangle, which we just find the value now as A root 2. So you simply have A root 2 multiplied by the width remains A. So this implies that the area of the plane is equal to A squared times root 2. So this gives us the area of the plane. Our next task now is to find the number of atoms on this plane. So you take a look at each of these corners. Now, atoms are usually spherical in shape. And since they are spherical in shape, it means the entire angle given by an atom is 360 degrees. So if you take a look at this sphere, we only consider the part or the shader region which are the part enclosed in the rectangle. Okay, we consider all these parts enclosed in the rectangle. So let's consider now number of corner atoms. Number of corner atoms. So this is going to be equal to, for the corner atoms, since the entire angle of a sphere is 360 degrees, but we are only considering this angle that is enclosed in the rectangle. Now you consider that the angle enclosed in the rectangle is the angle between the length and the width of this rectangle, and that angle is 90 degrees. So this angle here is 90 degrees, this angle here is also 90 degrees, this angle here is 90 degrees. This angle here is 90 degrees. So if you have this, that means the number of atoms enclosed here is simply 90 degrees out of 360 degrees of the angle of a sphere. That means the number of corner atoms here is 90 degrees divided by 360 degrees. Same thing here, we have 90 degrees divided by 360 degrees. Same thing here, we have 90 degrees divide by 360 degrees and finally here we have 90 degrees divide 360 degrees now what then is 90 degrees divide 360 that simply gives you 1 all over 4 so which means each of these corner atoms are contributing one fourth of their volume or number so which means here we have 1 all over 4 we also have here 1 all over 4 we have here 1 all over 4 simply because 90 divided 360 gives us 1 over 4 so the number of corner atoms remains 1 over 4 plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 4 since we have 4 corner atoms you add them all together it becomes 4 times 1 all over 4 because we have 4 corner atoms which are contributing 1 over 4 of their volume so that means the number of corner atoms remains 4 times 1 over 4 and that is equal to 1. Then again, you look at the center, at the body of the plane, we have a whole large atom there, which is offering its entire volume. Therefore, number of central atom, number of central atom, that one remains equal to 1, because we have one full atom at the body of the cubic plane. So if you have this, therefore, total number of atoms, you can wipe this now, so number of atoms now, total number of atoms becomes the sum of the corner atom and the central atom. So we have 1 plus 1, okay, so you have 1 plus 1 which gives you 2. So we have 2 total number of atoms, hence the planar density, planar density is equal to, we said, number of atoms which is 2 divided by area of the plane and the area of the plane gave us here a squared root 2 so you have a squared root 2 this is equal to 2 all over the square root of 2 is 1.4142 a squared so this simply implies that the planar density is equal to let's obtain 2 divides 1.4142 that simply gives us 1.4142 all over a squared unit remains atoms per squared meter all right guys so that's how you find planar density for bcc 101 
explained. I hope you find this video very interesting and helpful. Please, if you do, I would like to get your thoughts in the comment section. Do well to like this video, comment nicely, share to your friends, and if you are new to the channel, do well to hit the subscribe button and turn on your notification bell to keep getting updates when our videos drop. In the next video, we are going to be talking about the hexagonal closed pack structure. I'm sure you want to be a part of that video. Do well to stick around. I will see you in that video. Thanks. Thank you.